Welcome everyone to the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition, and I am your host and teacher, Pastor Mark McCoy. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. And as always, we believe it is a day to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for allowing us to, to see this day. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for allowing us to see this day. And we give you all the praise, honor, and glory because you're God and you're God all by yourself. You're wonderful, you're magnificent, you're glorious, God. And we just thank you for being that kind of God. And we ask you now, dear Heavenly Father, as we get ready to study your word over uh, this conference call, over Facebook and all of the internet, that you bless this technology. We plead the blood over this technology right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, touch every household that is listening in now and that will listen to this recording later. We thank you, the Heavenly Father, for your anointing upon this message, dear Lord, that it might go forth and touch someone, encourage someone, increase someone's faith in you, O oh God. And then, Lord, we even ask that this word today might go out and somebody might be saved. We thank you for this, O oh God. We thank you and we praise you for it by, by the power of your Holy Spirit and by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior. We ask you now, the Heavenly Father, even as we're praying, that you forgive us of all of our sins and shortcomings. And we just ask you, Lord, to just watch over us and keep us. Bless us now, Lord, that your word might go forth without error, without anything. Uh, just go straight to the point, dear Lord. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Again, welcome everyone to the Guiding Light Ministry and Sunday School Lesson Edition. Uh, our text for today comes from um, Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. And um, the verses that the uh, Sunday School Lesson uh, key off of is verses 18 through 26, uh, 18 through 26, but uh, I, I don't believe it's right to come to, to the 20th chapter of Exodus and not read those first 17 verses. So if you will allow me today to just read the scripture from of all of chapter 20. Uh, it's a very pivotal chapter in the life of, of the, the uh, Israelites as they were coming out of the land of Egypt and wandering in the wilderness and it is still a key uh, chapter for us who are under the new covenant of Jesus Christ. We need to hear what the word of God says and I'm reading out of a new King James version of the Bible and it reads as thus. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Verse 8, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. 
six days you shall labor and do not and do all your work but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God in it you shall do not you shall do no work you nor your sons nor your daughters nor your maid servants nor your female servants nor your cattle nor your strangers who is within your gates for in the sixth day the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in it, in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Verse 12, honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not fear. You mean you shall not bear false witness against your neighbors. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, or nor anything that is your neighbors all right so that i had to read all of the ten commandments now we get to our text for today in verse 18 and it starts by saying now all the people witnessed the thundering and the lightning flashing the sound of the trump of the trumpet the mountain smoking and when the people saw it they trembled and stood afar uh, off then they said to Moses, you speak with us and we will hear. But let not God speak with us lest we die. And Moses said to the people, do not fear. For God has come to test you or to prove you. The new King James Version, I mean the King James Version says. And that his fear may be before you so that you may not sin. So the people stood afar off, but Moses drew near the thick darkness where God was. Then the Lord said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, You have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. You shall not make anything to be with me. Make sure I'm saying. You shall not make anything to be with me. Gods of silver or gods of gold, you shall not make for yourself. And on an altar of earth shall make for me. And you shall sacrifice on it your burnt offerings and your peace offerings, your sheep and your oxen. In every place where I record my name, I will come to you and I will bless you. And if you make me an altar of stone, you shall not build it of huge stone, for if you use your tools on it, you have profaned it or desecrated it. Nor shall you go up by steps to my altar, that your nakedness may not be exposed on you. Amen, amen. Thank you for being patient with me to read the whole chapter of, of Exodus chapter 20. I wanted to read the whole chapter and, 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 and make sure that, that, that we understand the context in which we're dealing with today's lesson. Now, um, as I published on, on Facebook earlier, the memory verse for this is verse 20. And, and, and it says, fear not, for God has come to prove you that his fear may be before your face that ye sin not. But the verse that I really like, that, that I really think should have been the key verse for this lesson, 
is, is down in verse 24 in the latter part of the verse where it says, In every place where I record my name, I will come to you and I will bless you. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that right there. Wherever we, wherever we place God's name and his name is recorded, he says, I will come to you and I will bless you. And so uh, um, this this overall lesson is, is about obeying God's law, obeying God's law. And and our key concept is that that God wants us to obey his word. Now, now I, I could I could place this thing in, in, into into some 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 W's, you know, we got to. Uh, obey his word we gotta trust his word and then we gotta worship in his word oh hallelujah but we we're not gonna we we may play with that as i'm speaking but 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 that stuff that that's just comes to my mind uh um uh, the message for kids the keys for kids today is god people should always obey him Number two, our behavior should show that we follow God's word. Amen. And number three is we are to love and respect God. And so as we get into this lesson today, the lesson facts that we're going to look at is describe the Israelites' reaction to God at Mount Sinai. The biblical principle that we're going to deal with is to explain what a proper fear of the Lord signifies. And then our daily application is to pray for strength to resist the temptation that leads to disobedience. Amen, amen, amen. So in this lesson today, we're going to look at it from, from two standpoints and maybe three, but I just listed two. Uh, fearing the Lord and hearing the and hearing the Lord, but I guess I could add a, a third, and it is worshiping the Lord, worshiping the Lord, and so the fear of the Lord. So uh, uh, before we let's talk about the background here, as we know, Moses Moses um, uh, is is the leader of the children of Israel. The children of Israel were were in bondage. Uh, to Egypt, they were in slavery. Moses was born uh, in slavery, but we know that he 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 eventually ended up uh, in a basket floating down the river, and and the uh, uh, one of the princesses of Egypt got him and raised him up in the in in the in the pa in Pharaoh's palace. And while he was being raised in Pharaoh's pa palace, as he got older. He, 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 he saw how the Hebrews were being treated by the Egyptians and he ended up killing another Egyptian, protecting the he, a Hebrew uh, uh, slave. And then he ended up uh, running away and living in on the other side of the mountain. And that's where he, he hooked up and got married, with, uh, stayed with Jethro, became a shepherd. And then... One day when he was at, at Mount Sinai, God showed up in a burning bush, showed up in a burning bush and told him to go and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Moses did as God said, went back, led the people eventually up out of Egypt. Now they are out of Egypt and they, they're being led by God, by, by uh, a cloud by day and by fire by night. And now some three months have passed. And so last week when we when we uh, uh, looked at chapter 19 of Exodus, we saw that God was trying to talk to them. God, God, they, God wanted to meet them personally because he, God is a personal God. He wanted to have a personal encounter with them. And he, when he came uh, the, to the mountain and had everybody surrounding the mountain and doing it, and, and, and consecrating themselves and coming and setting bounds around the mountain. He came and he talked to them. And this is a continuation of that discussion. And so here we have now in chapter 20, God spoke to the people and he gave them the Ten Commandments. And the Ten Commandments are broken down in two different ways. Uh, I mean, two ways. Um, uh, uh, 
the first um, of the commandments are to show our relationship with God. How we are to have a relationship with God. And then the second half of the Ten Commandments is to show how we are to have a relationship with others. And so when he tells us, don't have any other God before me, worship me and worship me alone. Don't make any idol gods because uh, uh, God is a jealous God. When he tells us to, to, to not take his name in vain, when he tells us to, to honor the Sabbath day, all of that is about his relationship with us and our relationship with him. And then when he gets down to the, the latter part, he says, honor your father and mother because that's the first promise of a blessing. And don't murder and don't commit adultery and don't steal and don't bear false witness and don't covet it. All of those are our relationships with others. So we have what we call the vertical relationship between us and God and the horizontal relationship between us and others. And Jesus captured this when he told us in, in under the new covenant to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and soul and thy neighbor as thyself. If we can take those two things, those, those two commandments, we will capture and follow all of the law of the Old Testament, the law of Moses, the law that God gave in the Ten Commandments by just loving the Lord thy God with all thy heart and soul and loving our neighbor as thyself. And so if if you don't catch anything else in this lesson, we must learn to love the Lord thy God with all our heart and our soul and our neighbor as ourself. If we do that, boom, we have met the Ten Commandments. Yes, we, we have become blessed and, and God's name is upon us. Oh, hallelujah. And so let's, let's go deeper into the lesson. Let's go deeper into the lesson. That's the background. And so now in this lesson, in this lesson, we look at verses 18 uh, verse 18 all the way down to 21. And this time I'm going to read it out of the New Living Translation. New Living Translation, just to give us a mix of a translation. It says, when the people heard the thunder and the loud blast of the ram's horn, when they saw the flash of lightning and the smoke billowing from the mountain, they stood at a distance trembling with fear and they said to Moses you speak to us and we will listen but don't let God direct uh, speak directly to us or we will die oh hallelujah don't be afraid Moses answered them for God has come in this way to test you so that your fear of him will keep you from sinning as the people approached or as the people stood in the distance moses approached the dark cloud where god was hallelujah hallelujah and so in, in this section this is dealing with the fear of the lord we ought to have a proper fear of the lord it is not that we should be shaking in our boots, but, but we should have a reverence for God. For the beginning of knowledge or wisdom is the fear of God, is the reverence and awe of God. I, 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 I think about this often uh, uh, coming up as a child. Uh, my father, my father was a very, very uh, strong man. Um, uh, I was the baby boy, had a baby sister under me, but my previous uh, siblings, my older siblings, had to deal with the wrath of my father because when they messed up, boy, he would pull out them belts and he had belts hanging on his over his door where you know the the the, the belts where you where you uh, 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 sharpen your razors with. And, and boy, when they got got in trouble, he would pull them belts out. So I had a a a a a a, a fear of my father. 
But one of the things about that was, even though I had a fear for him, I loved him so much and still do today. I have to say it, I'm saying that in the past, but as a child. And so I would just wait as a child. When the sun got into a certain spot, I knew it was about 4, 430, and my daddy was coming home. And when my daddy came home, it didn't matter how dirty he was or whatever, I would jump up into his arms or grab his leg because I had gotten so big I couldn't jump up into his arms no more. Hey, daddy, hey, daddy. And he would be like just grunting because he tired. He didn't came in from work. But if somebody, if you didn't say hello to daddy, when he came in the house, even if he was just grunting, oh, he would get on your case. Oh, so you can't speak today? What's wrong with you? You know, so we, we had we had a, a, a great respect for our father and, and, and because he was our provider. He the one that was there providing for us and leading and guiding the family. And then if we did something wrong, he was there to, to, to issue out the punishment. And that's the blessing, if you will, because if, 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 if someone doesn't love you, they won't correct you. God loves those. Oh, he corrects those that he loves. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And so the children of Israel had to learn that they needed a proper respect for God. They need to have a proper respect for God and they needed to learn how to worship him and, and, and worship him in the correct form. And so, and so Moses, Moses showed them how to do it. He was in an example. When the people said, well, Moses, we don't want you to speak to us. I mean, we don't want God to speak to us. Now, they had been complaining earlier, you know, you know, because the children of Israel complained so much in the wilderness. Oh, have mercy. They had been complaining about this and complaining about that, like complaints are going to fix something. But they were like, well, Moses, go and talk to God. We can talk to God ourselves. But when God actually came to talk to them, they turned and said, "No, we don't want to hear this. We 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 don't we don't want to hear this. We want we want we we don't want to talk to God now. Oh wow, this is just too much." And and so the people put Moses in the position of a mediator. God had really already made him a mediator, but now they were at a point where they were going to respect him as a mediator, a go between between them and God. And so Moses said to the people, he told them, don't be afraid for God has claimed to, to test you, to prove you, to see if you uh, really have the proper mindset to worship me in spirit and in truth, to, to understand if you really, really love me and, and not just afraid of me. And he, he wanted them to, to, to have that kind of mindset. But the children of Israel were like, mm -hmm. And so, in turn, Moses went on up into this cloud, this darkness, to talk to God. God was hoping that the people would hear his voice, would hear the voice of God and would hear the voice of Moses and that they would have a proper reverence and a proper fear of God so that they would not sin against God. And so while Moses was up there, God talked to Moses again. And so that's the second part of our lesson. We have the fear of the Lord. Now we're going to hear, put the hearing of the Lord. Listen to what he says in verses 22 through 26. Then the Lord said to Moses, and I'm supposed to be reading out of the New Living Translation. <laughs> and the Lord said to Moses, Say this to the people of Israel. You saw for yourself 
that I have spoken to you from heaven. Remember, you must not make any idols of silver and gold to rival me. Build for me an altar made of earth and offer your sacrifice to me, your burnt offerings, your peace offerings, your sheep and your goats, your cattle. Build my altar where, whenever I cause my name to be remembered and I will come to bless you, come to you and bless you. If you use stones to build my altar, use only natural uncut stones. Do not shape the stones with a tool, for that would make the altar unfit for holy use. And do not approach my altar by going up steps. If you do, someone might look up under the clothes and see your nakedness. Amen. Amen. And so... God had spoken to Moses to go back and tell the people how to really worship him. And, 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 I, and I love this portion of this scripture because when we worship God, we must worship him in spirit and in truth. We got to come to God the way God wants us to come to him. We just can't come to God any old kind of way. And 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 and, uh, and that's 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 that that is that is God's standard, and He He has the right to tell us how to come to Him, and so when He tells them, He already told them early in the Ten Commandments, don't be having any carved images or idols, but now He's He's telling them, look, don't have make any idols of me, you know, not only have other idols. But don't even make an idol of him. And, and, and don't be making it more gold and no silver. Because God is not, uh, God, well, no, let me say it this way. God is a spirit. And he ought to be worshipped in spirit and in truth. We, we are not need some kind of idol, some kind of ornament, some kind of trinket to look at to worship God. Because we worship him in spirit and truth by faith and not by sight. The just shall live by faith and not by sight. And then he also told him, now you can build an altar because you need an altar to do these sacrifices, the, the burnt offerings and, 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 and all of the offerings because the offerings is, is something you present to God as an act of sacrifice and as an act of worship. And so when you build these altars, these places where you're going to do your sacrifices and your burnt offerings, you, you, you don't, you, you shouldn't, you shouldn't build them, uh, um, using stones that have been created. And see, and what he was doing, he was separating the people from the way things were being done with other idol worshipers. In Egypt, they carved stones and they had brick stone, or they had altars made of bricks. And, and then not only that, but, you know, they, they had shaped them and put them all together. And then they would go up to 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 the altar they would walk up these steps and 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 unfortunately they had like the fertility gods that they worship and they would walk up to the steps and they would be half naked and people be looking at them because that's what they were getting ready to do go up there and 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 and, and worship this fertility god and god did not want them the children of israel to be like that he said just just make this thing simple just make it straightforward. I want you to worship me with the simplest of things and worship me in spirit and truth. And so then he says this, this verse, build my altar wherever I cause my name to be remembered and I will come to you and bless you. We have these terms, and I, I, I'm not going to try to name them all, but we have Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, uh, Jehovah Shalom. These are places where we build altars unto God. 
Um, we have that Ebenezer where, where, where it's the place of help where they built altars. The children of Israel have built altars unto the, to the name of the Lord. All his various names. I don't have them all written down and didn't do. But I, I know God, God is saying, hey, when, when you build these altars, you're doing it in remembrance of me and my name. And I will be with you and bless you. And so we who 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 uh, go to church in, in, in the new covenant, we, we, we have altars there and we're, we're worshiping Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, thanking him for his death, his burial and his resurrection. And that's a place of worship and God's name is there. And when God's name is that, that's why it says, I will bless you. I will come and be with you and I will bless you. Oh, hallelujah. And that's why even in our own homes, we, we need to have what do we call our secret places. Our places where we go and we sit and we worship God and we pray. As the, as the movie The War Room says, you ought to have a war room somewhere where, where, you're, where you can go and, and, and worship and praise and, and be alone with God. Because when you do that, in spirit and in truth, he comes and he blesses you. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. This this lesson, this lesson, I, I, I really enjoyed studying this lesson and, and going over this lesson today with you. Um, it, it is a mighty and powerful lesson to, to, to read. Uh, I know normally when you go to the, the, the 20th chapter, you may not read those verses past 18. But this is, this is a good place to just read because it gives you insight onto how God is and then even to how people react to God and how God wants to change that reaction from a reaction of trembling fear where you're scared like you're scared of a snake to reverence fear where you respect him and worship him in spirit and truth. Amen. Thoughts to ponder. Number one, God's presence demands our respect and reverence. Number two, the fear and reverence toward God should impact our daily conduct. Number three, God has our best interest in heart and calls us into a covenant with him. Number four, God speaks to us to reveal his will for us as his covenant people. And number five, proper worship brings God's blessings to his people. Oh, hallelujah. Catch that one. God's proper worship brings God's blessings to his people. In conclusion, Christians are of a new covenant. That was brought on by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. With this new covenant, God has not come with all the phenomenon that you might that He displayed at Mount Sinai with thunder and lightning and all of that. But instead, He came to us to be with us in Jesus, our Emmanuel. God is with us. So we don't have to deal with the issues such as burnt offerings and constructing altars in which to sacrifice uh, uh, all our burnt offerings and, and, and that was covered in this lesson. However, what God requires of us remains exactly what was required of the children of Israel. The requirement is captured in this one word, obedience. Why call ye me Lord, Lord, ask Jesus, and do not the things which I say. Jesus also told us, if you love me, keep my commandments. In other words, trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust 
and obey. Oh, hallelujah. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come to you and say thank you for being the true and living God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you, Lord, for always being with us. And we ask you now, Lord, help us to trust you and to obey you. Help us to have the proper reverence and respect for you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Before we close a session on Facebook and on the conference call, we always like to pray the prayer of salvation with those who are listening now and those who will be listening in the future. And the prayer of salvation is based on Romans, the chapter 10, verses 9 through 10, uh, and then verses 13, that simply says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord, shall be saved. So if you will, pray this prayer with, prayer with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we come confessing Jesus. We confess that he died on the cross for our sins and that you raised him from the dead. Please forgive us of all of our sins and come into our heart. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving us. Thank you, Lord, for coming into our hearts. Thank you for saving our soul and making us whole. We confess and proclaim you are our Lord and Savior. And we are your children from this day forward. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If you prayed that prayer and truly believe it in your heart, you are now saved. You need to find you in a good church where the Bible and the word of God is being taught and people worship in spirit and truth so that you can walk with the Lord and be blessed. Facebook, we will talk to you later next week if you want to join us in the conference call where we have a moment of discussion of the lesson you can call 910-218-0531 910-218-0531 be blessed on facebook have a wonderful week